Hello everyone, and welcome back to Planet Odds Mods. This is Otaku Showboat, and today we will be covering Circuit 2's and Blue Science? Yes, I had originally planned on having Blue Science as its own separate video, but as I've been saying pretty much the entire time, if you have Circuit 2's, you have Blue Science. Therefore, we'll be, we will be covering both of these together in this one video today. Now, what's that going to mean for the videos going forward? I've got no idea, because I honestly haven't, uh, at this point in time, decided what the next tutorial uh, will be after this uh, in the post-Circuit 2 world. Uh, I have to decide what I think or would suggest the next... Uh, relevant items would be going on the route towards either Circuit 3's or Purple Science. So, with that, let us begin today. As per usual, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help make this tutorial series appear higher up in YouTube search results. You can do all the social stuff in the links in the description below this video, including Follow me on Twitch and Twitter, visiting my website, and becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash But You can also help to support Pyandon's Mods development on Patreon at patreon.com slash And you can join my Discord server as well to take part in the community and leave all of your wonderful and beautiful opinions on the tutorial series uh, in there because I am actively reading literally everything. I read literally all of it uh, at this point in time. So, Circuit 2s. In the previous tutorial, we covered how to get the etching solution and the doped silicon. The tutorial before that, we covered how to get the optical fiber. So, that leaves us with solder, PCB 2s, Circuit 1s, Inductor 2s, capacitor 2s, resistor 2s, transistors, microchips, and diodes. That seems like a lot, but we've already covered circuit board 1s. Uh, solder is also just... It's incredibly simple. Like, solder... If I can find where I have just a regular... Just a regular automated factory. Solder has several options to make it, if I can find where solder exists. Solder exists in Pyro, Pyro Wars category. Uh, lead and tin. That's the basic recipe. Lead and tin. Or, you can double your output at twice the speed by adding tar. So, you get a lot more by adding tar. You get even more by adding silver into the mix. Uh, in this case, you can replace lead with silver and add copper uh, with a bit of extra tin to get more output. And then the best recipe, the hands-down best recipe to get solder is to throw lead, silver, tin, and tar. I would suggest this recipe no matter what uh, place you are at in the overall uh, game. Like, no matter where you are in the game. I will always suggest using the 10 solder every 2 second recipe when you do get access to it. Otherwise, you just need non-zero amounts of solder. This can also use productivity modules once you do get your circuit 2s and can start using productivity modules. So, bear in mind that you can only get product you can only get modules after you get your first non-zero amounts of circuit 2s. I would highly suggest setting up some automation of your circuit twos very first thing like that that's one of the first things you should be doing is setting up uh module automation as soon as you get circuit twos it will consume circuit ones and circuit twos for the level one modules and the level two modules would need circuit twos and circuit threes the level three modules will now need circuit threes and circuit fours it's a rather unfortunate change that uh, was made, one that does make some modicum of sense, but it does make those level 3 modules almost prohibitively expensive. 
almost prohibi prohibitively expensive considering you need a whole bunch of the previous level modules as well to make each one. But anyway, I digress. Since we covered all of the uh, silicon items needed last time, as well as etching solution, we can just start, I suppose, with our PCB1s. PCB1s will need etching solution, which we've covered, tin, nylon parts, which we also have technically covered because we covered how to get nylon, and nylon parts is just a building making nylon parts out of nylon. It's just straight up nylon into nylon parts. Uh, bus the nylon if you're busing nylon, uh, slash fly in with robots the nylon, and then direct feed the nylon parts uh, if you can because of uh, the difference in resource density here. Copper plates, you have those. That just leaves phenolic boards. Phenolic boards as the quote-unquote hard part. Phenolic boards. Phenolic boards require ammonia, which is urea, which is fine. Sodium hydroxide, which you should have been making by now to some extent at least. You likely do have sodium hydroxide in some way, shape, or form. Fiberboard, which you've made for circuit ones already, so scale up your fiberboard. And then bakelite, or bakelite. Uh, pretty sure it is bakelite. So that's new. Bakelite requires formaldehyde, which you've seen and used before. Phenol which you've seen and used before. Organic matter, which is free from logs. And then zinc chloride. Zinc chloride, that is the only, like, new thing here. So remember phenol for your nylon. It's like, well, there's phenol. There's phenol. You can, uh, you can pretty much just feed in the phenol into your bakelite. See, I have a uh, thing uh, making phenol over here. Uh, this is making the phenol to feed into the bakelite. And then this phenol is taking care of what's needed in the, uh, in the nylon. So, I'm currently doing the formaldehyde via tholins. You may want to do formaldehyde in a different way out of uh, methane and copper plates. That's up to you how you want to do that. It's up to you how you want to do the phenol. I will always suggest doing coal and filtration media at this point in time. Organic matter, logs from water into a single thingy making organic matter is going to give you more than enough to uh, cover things cover a lot, you just have to bring in zinc chloride, which uh, we discussed that in the zinc processing video, uh, the production of zinc plates. Uh, so that's just a bunch of zinc and chlorine to make zinc chloride. Very commonly used uh, and uh, also technically used if you're doing filtration media because uh, zinc chloride is used to make activated carbon, which uh, is used in the production of filtration media, so you already have that. And that will be PCBs, PCB2s. Like, that's that's real easy, right? Once you've, once you've set up your etching solution, phenolic boards are, like, not an issue. Uh, and especially if you've already set up your uh, optical fiber and you already have the nylon for the nylon parts for this stuff. Moving right along, let us now cover the actual new things here. We'll start with diodes, microchips, and transistors. Microchips. Quite a few uh, in the ratio I have here. Microchips will require plastic. We talked about plastic when we made microfiber. Light and dope silicon, p-dope silicon, cermet, tinned cable, and tin plate. For reference, tinned cable uses copper and copper wire and uh, tin. It's just copper wire plus tin. 
to make the uh, tinned cable if I can find the recipe. Uh, and this will also be able to take productivity modules eventually. This will be a massive drain on tin, as well as copper, but the bigger problem here is the drain on tin, uh, just due to the uh, efficiency of converting ore for tin into plates. Just the amount of plates that you get out is relatively low at this point in the game uh, by comparison to things like copper, so... You're going to have to make sure that you've scaled up your tin production because not only is tin going to be used as tin plates, it's also going to be massively used as tin cable in uh, Circuit 2s here uh, in various different steps, not just this one. Sermits! If we haven't talked about sermits before uh, in any particularly high detail. Sermits are ash, crude sermits, and lubricant. Now, you can you have plenty of methods to make heavy oil uh, at this point in the game. Uh, well, you have a method from crude oil by steam cracking to make heavy oil, so you have the ability to get plenty of lubricant for this. And you definitely have massive amounts of means of making ash, especially if you've already uh, set up your silicon wafers. Yeah, this gives... Uh, not zero amount of flu gas that will give you a little bit of ash to help in sermit production if you so desire uh, but this sermits are a big demand on ash uh, I think these are one of the largest consumers uh, of ash is uh, the production of sermits so do bear that in mind ash very easy to make very easy to make uh, especially if you're doing like the uh, red hot coke production you get lots of flue gas out of that uh, slash the ability to make a lot of flue gas out of that uh, so yeah just you have like ash is so easy there's so many ways of making ash there don't don't worry about that now crude sermit this is where the problems start to come in crude sermit ceramics we've seen ceramics in the production of circuit ones nickel or molybdenum ore molybdenum ore and nickel ore. So you need two separate raw ores as well as ceramic to make crude sermit. The reason why this is a bit of a problem is because molybdenum is very rare. You're not really using that many plates right now, but you have to have molybdenum uh, basically to make circuit twos. It's like, this is one of the things that uses molybdenum that requires you to be mining molybdenum first. So definitely, definitely be sure to bear that in mind. You need the molybdenum as an ore itself. Uh, if you've been following my advice, you've set up a bot-based base and are doing this via bots, you're going to need to put some of your molybdenum ore onto your network so that it can feed into sermits or start mining something specifically for this purpose because, spoilers, you're going to be using sermits for more than just circuit twos, circuit two stuff. If you are doing any amount of particle acceleration, you're going to need sermits for crystal graphic substrate. And then you're going to need it for paradigmatic resistors. I can't believe I actually pronounced that correctly the first time. Paradigmatic resistors, which are used in circuit fours. So you'll use a lot more at circuit fours, and you'll use a lot more depending on how much uh, particle acceleration you're doing. So, definitely keep all of these things in mind. So that's the sermits. That's the sermits. And the tin cable. And then, of course, vacuum. Just pressure pump for vacuum. Transistors! This is going to be heavy N, light N, and P-doped. This is going to be the one thing that uses heavy N 
in this process. So heavy N is only used in this one thing, uh, which is the transistors. This will also need melamine resin and nylon. So hope you're producing an ex a bit of an excess of nylon. And then melamine resin we saw way back with uh, the production of circuit ones. So that is like just logistics. Just just do the logistics for that. Diodes. Diodes will require nylon, light N, silicon, P-doped silicon, cermet, rare earth oxides, and tin plate. None of this is now new to us. We should have all of this by now. This is just logistics, bringing all of this together. Bringing all of this together. Remember that the rare earth oxide is used actually in, I think, the heavy N-doped silicon. Rare earth oxides. So you definitely have the rare earth by now. So if you have the rare earth by now, if you have the nylon, if you have the cermets, and yet if you have the silicon, all, all of that's done. Next. Next, we have the capacitor twos. So capacitor twos will require capacitor ones, which we've seen as part of circuit ones. These will require ceramic and tin, as well as aluminium, plates, tinned cable, boric acid, and aluminium pulp one. Now in like, this is a accurate somewhat reflection of the actual production of a similar type of capacitor in real life. There is a part of that yet uses an aluminium mix. Uh, so this is somewhat of a reflection of a real life process, but it's also it also acts as a check to make sure that you are making uh, that you've gone through the process to make pulp uh, out of aluminium, which means that you've also definitely gone through the process of doing phosphoric acid, uh, which I mean this takes phosphine here as well. So it's like you definitely need your phosphate processing uh, for that. So that's relatively simple. Refer to boron or borax uh, video for the boric acid. We know all about boric acid by now. We know about these tinned cables. You should have aluminium as both plates and pulp. And then the capacitor is just ceramics and tin. Or ceramics, uh, ceramics and tin. Next, inductor twos will require inductor ones tint cable, melamine resin, and ferrite. First time we've seen ferrite. Ferrite. Iron oxide. Nichrome. Zinc plates. Iron oxide. Nichrome and zinc plates. If you are lacking iron oxide, there is an iron oxide production recipe that uses nitrobenzene. There is an iron oxide recipe that uses nitrobenzene plus iron plates to make iron oxide. If you do not have enough iron oxide at this point in the game and don't want to do other means of making it, uh, there are other very, very nice means there are other very, very good means of making iron oxide. Hint, hint, hint. There are other very consistent good means of making a lot of iron oxide uh, that exist. Also, you're going to get a bit out of your rare earth oxide chain at the very end here. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. Nichrome is the pain in the butt here. Uh, and then even more zinc. Even more zinc. It gets used here. Even more zinc. We have zinc throughout this entire process. So yeah, it's like, well, okay. Lots of zinc. Lots of zinc. Uh, and then nichrome in not zero amounts. This is actually quite a lot uh, of nichrome for that point in the game for at green science it's a lot of nichrome uh, it's it's even a lot of nichrome now at blue and beyond purple 
science. So, yeah, bear that in mind. Nichrome will probably be your biggest bottleneck outside of just the sheer volumes of zinc that get used uh, in all of this. Uh, plan accordingly. Definitely plan accordingly. Now, ferrite... Ferrite is used as well in superconducting coils for this stuff. This stuff it, it applies going into circuit threes, uh, as well as into Mark IV thingies. Uh, and then blanket chassis is mostly for fusion, only for fusion, and wall shields also used in fusion but also in uh various mark IV stuff as well so bear in mind ferrite will get used for other things later uh, and then that will be your inductor twos and that brings us to resistor twos resistor twos sermit again boric acid Resistor 1s, which is coke, glass, and tin. And ferrochromium alloy. Ferrochromium alloy. Only really used in resistor 2s and molten stainless steel. You do have stainless steel by now, right? You've needed stainless steel uh, by now because you needed stainless steel to make gas processing units. Mark I gas processing units need the stainless steel, uh, if I'm not completely mistaken. Now, yes, yeah, so that was ferrochromium alloy. You, you, like, you have all of the things to make the stainless steel. We haven't really talked about distinctly in its own video making stainless steel but you have everything that you need to make it now so if you for some reason if for some reason you haven't done stainless steel yet do it to make your gas processing units and come back like that is the way to do it now initially you're going to be making ferrochromium alloy directly out of iron plates and chromium uh, plus graphite in electric arc furnaces you will absolutely want to transition into the molten recipe. abso freaking lutely transition to the molten recipe. The molten recipe is significantly better and faster. Uh, you will love the you will you will love ferrochromium alloy at that point. It will not be a problem once you transition into the molten based recipes so really that's it that's it that's your resistor twos your capacitor twos your inductor twos uh your transistors your diodes your microchips your pcb twos your optical fiber uh, and all of that good stuff. And you already have the circuit board ones, and that's the solder. So, congratulations! You now have literally everything that you need for circuit twos. You now have circuit twos. Once you've set up all of the logistics for moving around all of these items, uh, of course, made a lot easier if you're using robots made significantly easier on yourself by using robots. You now have circuit twos, which also means ba -ba -ba! If I can remember where the heck it exists. Where does this recipe exist again? You now have chemical science packs. The moment you start making circuit twos, you now have chemical science packs. You now have circuit, uh, the, the blue science. Because blue science is optical fiber, which is an ingredient in circuit twos. You have the circuit twos. You have rubber from a very long time ago, way back when, when you first started doing green science, which by the way, green science is being changed 
two requires circuit ones uh, through a bit of uh, the lab equipment. Uh, via lab equipment. It, it's a slight change. It's not currently live. It will soon be live, and just bear that in mind. Green Science is soon going to, in its production chain, require you to have Circuit th 1 production first. So you need to, you must now have Circuit 1 automation before setting up Green Science. Uh, and it will be a demand on circuits. Uh, so that's uh, a change uh, that's upcoming, unrelated to any of this. But anyway, that it, just because rubber is here and rubber is also used in, uh, in green science. Uh, anyway, you also have stainless steel because you needed stainless steel to make your gas processing unit mark ones. And you have tinned cable because it's used in multiple steps at the very end here going into the circuit board twos. So, congratulations, you now have chemical science. You now have blue science, which means that you now have the ability to unlock so much stuff. So much stuff. Like, you, you can get, uh, let's see here. You can get low density structures, yeah, you can get, uh, let's have a look. Processing three, slash two blue science processing of all of your ore types becomes immediately available to you. There are going to be things that you will unlock at blue science that you will not be able to make yet. Uh, and that includes substations. You need super steel for that, which, uh, good luck. Uh, we will cover that, but just know you're probably going to be at purple science by the time you have super steel you'll be at the next tech level basically uh, a lot of the personal equipment stuff that you unlock is going to require circuit threes so just just know that you're going to unlock a lot of stuff that you're not necessarily going to be able to use for quite some time uh, at blue science but blue science is going to give you access to the remaining ground boring recipes this is fantastic news you're going to get access to the remaining ground boring recipes you're going to get access to diamond mining you're going to get access to just lots lots of stuff lots of stuff you're going to be very 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 much happier even logistic warehouses are blue science here lots of st lots of stuff vanadium unlocks but i i'm not going to talk about we're we're not going to talk about vanadium vanadium can die a horrible death can die a very horrible death uh you do get access to the ability to make circuit board threes but as you can see it is a little bit more complex but uh as we approach things going forward we will eventually be able to make them so with that we are now done with circuit twos and blue science. You will be very happy at blue science in particular because now you can actually start making uh, productivity modules and speed modules and efficiency modules uh, at level one. Uh, that will very much help you uh, a lot. Uh, unfortunately, beacons are a purple science, uh, so you won't have beacons immediately, but you will absolutely be able to make use of uh, the wonderful module slots, the wonderful module slots at the very end of the circuit two process. In fact, that is my suggestion to you. Once you have made non-zero amounts of circuit twos, make a ton of productivity modules and build out your setup to make use of those level one productivity modules on every single step that uses productivity modules, which is the in the extreme vast majority. Basically everything except for filters in this process. Everything but filters will use productivity in this entire process. Maybe not here. You don't really need the productivity here on the uh, production of coal to go into your phenol, but definitely Definitely the phenol can use it. Definitely like bakelite can use it. Uh, phenolic boards. All of the end steps, even your silicon uh, can make 
fantastic use of it. Uh, just wherever possible, of course, you can't... Well, you can with acetic, but... Uh, you can't with some of the methanol stuff, a lot of the methanol stuff. So, yeah, with that, congratulations on hitting Blue Science. The game really, really opens up to you once you do have Blue Science. Uh, so much so that it's actually pretty difficult for me to determine exactly or decide which thing I should cover next. There are many 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 processes that are now available to you uh tentatively i said it would be the kimberlite processing chain i think i probably will do the kimberlite processing chain next but i have to decide on the exact order going forward of uh how we're going to do things because we also have like super steel we have the super alloy we have helium, we have vanadium that I'd like to cover at some point, even though I haven't actually built it out myself. That might take a little extra time. Uh, there's uranium processing, the whole chain in uranium processing. There's like rock hole, there's like stuff that we haven't done that's completely optional stuff that we can also cover uh, going forward. So yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be a mission, uh, and we are going to... Uh, definitely be continuing going forward uh i want to say that we might have a day or two of no tutorials uh this might be the last tutorial with a week in between because this is a good like point where i can collect myself and plan out everything going forward so expect this to be the last tutorial for at least the week ahead uh, this next week, there probably won't be any more tutorials. We are at Circuit 2's now. Uh, and I want to get the path into Circuit 3's and into the uh, Purple Science first, before Circuit 3's. Purple Science, and then Circuit 3's, and then beyond from there. So, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Showboat. If you have enjoyed today's video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help make this tutorial series appear higher up in search results. You can do all the social stuff in the links in the description below, including follow me on Twitch, on Twitter, visiting my website, becoming a patron on Patreon, joining my Discord, and helping out Pyanodon at patreon.com slash Pyanodon. And I will see you on the next tutorial in a bit when I've decided exactly what I want to do, most likely Kimberlite Processing. Uh, and uh, we will go from there.